Welcome back everybody. I hope you're all excellent. In today's video, we're going to look at five more killer tones using five more algorithms on the Eventide H9. Let's get straight into it. Let's get started with ducking delay. This is an effect that uh, really became prominent in the 80s and is probably most associated with the classic TC2290 dynamic delay. So what this does is it will look at your input signal as a trigger essentially to dampen the volume of your delays. Hence the term like your delays duck under your playing. They get turned down while you're playing. They get turned back up when you're not playing. I'll show it to you with a clean sound, then I'll swap over to a dirty sound because in my opinion, duck delays are so good for the fact that you can really get a wonderful wet lead sound while you're blazing away. The delay is not going to clash with your main guitar tone. When you stop, it's going to fill in all the gaps. But first, a little bit of clean. <laughs> So you have this huge ambient wash when you're not playing, but while you are playing, it's not clashing. And the way we control that is we have control over the ratio. That's essentially how much the delay is gonna get turned down. I've gone for quite an extreme ratio, eight to one here. The threshold, which is going to be the point at which the ducking delay basically gets triggered. And then we've got the release. A really fast release is gonna bring the delays back up to volume immediately. A really slow release is gonna slowly fade them back in. I normally like a release of around 150 milliseconds here. And I have also turned up the filter just to make the delay sound a little bit warmer. It is a wonderful delay sound that I could play around with all day. <laughs> Next up, let's check out tremolo verb. This is the classic spaghetti western combination, you know, trem and a big spring reverb, Ennio Morricone, all those kind of sounds. It was also pretty popular with surf music, I guess largely because Fender made amplifiers that had trem and spring reverb in them. This algorithm is a little bit different though in that the trem is only applied to the reverb tails. So you can get this really nice pulsing rhythmic effect as the reverb decays. I'll demonstrate this by cranking up the mix and I'm going to have the trem depth quite low. I'll play a little bit and I will slowly increase it. So it's going to start off just sounding like a big reverb, then it's going to wobble. <laughs> Bring the mix down a little bit there. To me, it's a really lovely way to get all the things you like about reverb, but to make it sit a little bit better against your dry guitar sound. So you've also got a couple of different options for the wave shape of the trem. You can try a triangle. I'll bring the mix up on this just a little bit.
also have control over the low and high level as well as essentially like a knee control on the high frequency, like a resonance parameter. Then there's stereo depth, you can control the speed and also I showed off a couple of different waveforms there. You can also attach this to an expression pedal if that's something that you wanna do. But for me, just a simple sine wave, the depth around 70, the speed around four hertz, just adds this really lovely character to a classic reverb sound. <laughs> Next up, let's take a look at the chorus mode, specifically the shimmer chorus mode, because this is going to allow us to add feedback to our chorus line, which is something that I want to do to emulate the Yamaha SPX90 symphonic patch. I did a video with the SPX90 a couple of weeks ago. I did another video where I showcase that you can get really close to that symphonic patch with the H9. And this is the patch. You can see the settings up on the screen at the moment. We're going to hear this all with the distorted sound. I'm going to start out dry and then I'm going to kick it in and it just gives you that massive late 80s Zach Wilde No More Tears kind of width and just grind to your tone. I'm a little bit in love with it. <laughs> So what we've got going on there is the rate, or I should say the speed is at 0.7 Hertz. That matches the factory SPX90 symphonic preset. Triangle wave shape sounded the closest to me. There's a little bit of depth and speed modulation as well as some feedback in there and intensity to taste in this particular example. But I tend to find the more the merrier with this effect. It's just one of those things where it does sound so much like a particular error. But at the same time, that is just such a glorious way to add thickness and depth to your guitar tone. This would be a great addition, say, to your lead guitar sound if you just wanted to make your lead guitar sound fatter and beefier than your main rhythm guitar sound when you're playing live. I dig it. <laughs> Following that theme of adding width and depth to your main guitar sound, let's check out the micro pitch algorithm. And this is the factory H3000 micro pitch algorithm. If you want that Eddie Van Halen thing that he had going on in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, this is exactly what you want. Let's have a listen to what it does again to my dry distorted sound. I'll just uh, play a little bit, then I'll kick it in and you're going to hear some extra kind of stereo spread and some real depth. And it just makes guitar playing even more fun. <laughs> This is essentially a chorus for people who don't like chorus, and you can really hear that on a clean sound. You get the width associated with the chorus, but not the wobble. To 
finish things off, this is the newest algorithm in the H9, but it is by far one of my favorites ever. It is the Triceracorus. So it is an emulation of the infamous Diatronics Tristereochorus. But on top of that, not only do we have the chorus algorithm, we've got the ability to add stereo detune, a big part of that kind of 80s clean sound was not only chorus, it was detune on top of chorus. We had to listen to the micro pitch a little bit earlier. Think of it as the best parts of that chorus sound we had before and the best parts of that detune sound. I'm going to start with the detune mix all the way down and then I'll add it in just to show you how much extra kind of sheen and shimmer it adds to this clean sound. <laughs> Is it overkill on a distorted sound? Yeah, but that's kind of the point of an effect like this. If you want something more subtle, you can try that symphonic mode or the micro pitch, but chorus plus detune really is the secret source for that sort of tone. I really hope you enjoyed those examples. These are just five particular algorithms that I've really been enjoying. The beauty of something like the H9 is you have all these tones plus so many more. I've done a few videos just like this one in the past that you can check out if you wanna check out some more of the different sounds that you can get in here. I'm gonna do some more in the future as well. Hopefully I will cover every single algorithm at some point in the future in this format. If there's a particular sound you would like me to try and replicate or a particular algorithm you would like me to explain, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you all next time.